everyone. Here we are going to be starting to cover joints. The joints are important because they are the ones that will permit movement between the bones. And these movements, they are going to have an amazing range of motion and complexity, as you can imagine. They are all well coordinated, such as playing a sport or playing an instrument. However, many of these joint activities are going to be performed several times daily and we probably don't even think about it like walking, texting, talking, etc. And in this module we will learn not only the main structures present in most joints but what type of movement each joint can perform and why they perform this type of movement. So starting with learning outcome number one we're going to talk about the main classification of joints. A joint, which can also be called an articulation or even an arthrosis, is going to be the point of contact between two bones, between bone and cartilage, or even between bone and teeth. And the scientific study of joints is termed arthrology, and also the study of motion of the human body is called kinesiology, which kinesi means movement. Bones actually do not contact one another directly. Some other connective tissue is always going to be present between the surfaces of the bones that contact one another to make up the joints such as your knees, your ankles, your wrists, and even your elbows. Joints, they do have a wide variety of structures and just as many functions. The most familiar are the junctions between neighboring bones that will allow the skeleton to actually perform the action such as kicking a ball or raising your hand in the class. But many joints will actually permit little to no motion. Why do some joints produce a wide range of movements and others allow little to no movement at all? Well, let's continue to talk about this in the next learning outcomes and we will be able to answer some of these very important questions and you will be able to understand all of this. Over the years, anatomists, they have used a variety of schemes to classify the various joints of the body. Some are going to be based on joint structure and others use joint movements or function. As you can imagine, because these are two different methods of classifying joints, the classification schemes that are going to be based on movement will place joints that are similar structure in different categories. With regards to classifying them with regards to the structure, this means that it's going to be the material that's going to be between the joints. We have three different types of structures. We have what we call the fibrous joints, the cartilaginous joints, and the synovial joints. Fibrous, like the name says, will be made of this dense, irregular connective tissue. Cartilaginous, as you can imagine, will be made up of cartilage that's going to be between the bones, usually hyaline cartilage. And the synovial joints will actually be made up of the two, so connective tissue and cartilage, and in the middle, it's going to form a cavity which will contain a fluid. And this fluid is going to be important because it will lubricate the cavity to decrease the friction between the two bones in that specific joint. With regards to the classification of function, we have three types as well. We have what we call the synarthrosis, the amphiarthrosis, and the diarthrosis. Syn reminds me of without, in Portuguese saying means without. So synarthrosis is immovable joints, so without a motion. Amphiarthrosis means that it's slightly movable joint. And diarthrosis means that it's going to be a freely movable joint. So now we have classifications according to structure and classification according to function. It is very important for us to define ligaments before we move on to the rest of this module as we will be talking a lot about the structure in the upcoming slides. Therefore, the ligament will refer to this dense irregular or a dense regular connective tissue structure that will bind bone to bone. 
we can differentiate ligaments from tendons as those will attach muscle to bone. So ligaments attach bone to bone and tendons attach bone to muscle. As you can imagine, they will come in a variety of forms and they are going to be an integral part of the joint. On this image, we can see right over here, highlighted in green, this is an example of ligaments that are holding the femur together with the coxal bone being held together at the hip joint. Now ligaments can serve as either an intrinsic binding structure within the joint itself, such as, for example, the sutural ligaments of the skull or even the periodontal ligaments of the teeth. Or in contrast, when you have an intrinsic type of joint, you can also have an extrinsic supporting bands that will stabilize the joints while also limiting their range of motion, such as the anterior cruciate ligament of the knee, which we will cover later on, and as you study the various joints of the body in the sections that will follow, you will learn about the structures, the location, and function of a variety of those ligaments.